three, two. Welcome to the Bamboo Project Podcast. My name is Donovan Gray, the future $10 billion man. On the way to 10 billion, I decided that I'm gonna help create 1,000 millionaires, including myself. And not by being a guru or selling a course, but by doing the things I already love to do every day and documenting my journey to get there. I figure I'll make all the mistakes so you don't have to. My name is Donovan Gray, and this is how I'll turn my life into a living. We have videos for all the things we've been doing for the last five years, and you can find all of those links in the description box below. This may be your first time here, and if it is, welcome to the family. But for everyone else, this is chapter four, page 197. Today's date is Saturday, January 6th, and it is 11, 16, AM. So before we get into the topics of the day, I always start off with screen time. That is when me and my baby girl check our phone to see how much time we spent on it last week. Because I always say, if you aren't taking advantage of your phone, then your phone's taking advantage of you. Let's see what's looking like for last week. Seven hours and 14 minutes on my phone every single day. And that's actually down from the week before, which is eight hours and 14 minutes. So I spent one hour less per day this week all right so that's pretty good my most used app was x for 18 hours and 51 minutes which is about three hours a day which like i said i think is not as bad just because i don't use the other apps as much so pretty much all of my social media goes to one app now as opposed to before youtube is for 10 hours and 23 minutes which is a little bit more than an hour a day then it's camera and then Instagram. And I know Instagram is so mad. I, I can, I've can i never seen them send me so many frivolous notifications about things that I don't care about. They're sending me about people that might be on Instagram that I might know, somebody posted on threads, I should get on threads, uh, someone posted in their story, uh, someone just joined. I'm just like, listen, bro, you was not sending me this many notifications before. Now that I'd use app five hours for the whole week, I'm, I'm lying four hours for the whole week you know how low that is to be on instagram for a whole week let me see that's 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 almost 35 minutes a day something like that for the whole week that's crazy 30 minutes a day on instagram for the whole week this is twitter i'm fucking with twitter and honestly those are my two those are my only two social media apps i guess if you want to count youtube you know i picked up my phone on average 92 times per day which is down from the week before and my first use app after pickup was mail, then Twitter, then YouTube. Not a single Instagram. I did messages. Instagram, nowhere in sight. And, so, and you know what's funny? My daily average, though, for notifications, Instagram is number three. Isn't that crazy? Okay, baby girl, what was your screen time like last week? My daily average is six hours and ten minutes. Okay, it's pretty good. The, the three hours is on Monopoly Go. Well, my most used app is TikTok. Ah, okay. For 12 hours. For the whole week. Mm -hmm. That's really low. For the whole week, you only use 12 hours? That's like not even an hour a day. I mean, it's a little bit more than an hour a day. But my daily, I, I'm like, that's two times. That means two days out of my week I spent completely on TikTok. On Instagram for seven hours, then Monopoly Go for five and a half hours. It's not a sponsorship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, then messages for three hours, Gmail for two, and so on and so forth. I picked up my phone on average 103 times, which is down 33% from the week before. You picked up how many times? 103. Okay. Okay. Now for the subscriber check on our candle channel, we are currently at 769 subscribers. Let's go. We had a little, we had a little jump. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. The other one got 2,400 views. You saw that? The first one. That's crazy. It got 75 likes. That's crazy. That is crazy. I did not, and that, and it was so low like a day ago. We got five subscribers from that one video. Lord have mercy, that's crazy. Okay, and then the other one, how many did we get from that one? We only got one from the other one. We only got one. On our main channel, we have, oh, we hit the number? 6,701 subscribers on the main channel. We've finally crossed over 6,700. Okay, shout out to all of y'all. And then on Instagram, can't forget the Instagram. I feel like we've been going down. We are at 890 nine followers i was trying to stay over 900 but we got some heat coming for y'all so it will be going over 900 soon so let's get into the podcast 
What's up, all of my uh, all my peoples out there? Hope you're having a good New Year so far. So we're starting off good. Uh, most people always do. I don't know if that's true. I feel like most people's weeks usually do start off good. I don't know when everybody kind of like gives up on the New Year resolutions. I don't know when that is. It like the second week of January? Is it like February first? I feel like by February everybody's pretty much realized which resolutions they're gonna keep, which ones they're not gonna keep. But yesterday we had our meeting with the investor for the candles okay and we didn't get any money we it was it was a very weird conversation um but let me say let me preface it by saying this there's always a chance that in the future something can happen right so at the time right now she was saying that our business is not what she's looking for and it was odd to us because when we told, first of all, she didn't really know much about us or the business or anything at all, like at all. And when we told her, like we asked, like, do you know what we do? She was like, not really. We were like, okay, well, we, we sell candles and well, we've fragrances and you use candles as our main medium for the fragrances, right? And... As we talk more about it, she kind of said, or she said that that is something that she was looking for. She was looking for something more in the wellness space, maybe, or beauty space, or meditation space, something to that effect, right? And that st struck me as odd because the email that we received explicitly stated that the investor was looking to invest into candles. Like it literally was a candle investor, a can, a, an investor that I want to invest in candles. So you can imagine how odd it was for us to hear from her saying that she has no intention of investing into candles. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is from talking to her, I didn't really get the vibe that she is a, a seasoned investor or like has been doing it for a long time. Right. She has a corporate job and I guess she wanted to get into investing into small businesses in some capacity and she decided to reach out to people. And one thing I thought that was funny is during a phone call or during the Zoom, she has said that a lot of people thought it was a scam. And for us, I think that's funny because that shows that this is not something that she's done a lot of because she I don't I don't know of people in situations where investors reach out to people and want to invest in small businesses I don't really without knowing anything about them any numbers or anything they just say hey I'm looking to invest in your business so I could imagine how a lot of people would perceive it to be a scam so that came across very surprising um and Melissa and I had a conversation talking, well, after the, the phone call uh, and just kind of talked about what happened on the Zoom. And we aren't really sure if what even happened, to be honest with you. That's kind of how we kind of left it, the, the phone call. My mind was this person is not really looking like they're not in the know or privy to this side of business and melissa was saying that we should have said different things to her for her to understand our business so it was a very it, it wasn't odd in terms of the flow of the conversation i think that it was we laughed we joked or whatever um but i don't really know what she's looking for so one thing that i have said in the past which i think i would definitely be do more of going forward just just because my style is being straightforward that's always my style i feel like it's easier to get to a, the root of a problem um it's not there's no lube when i do it you know i'm more or less trying to get to a common ground and then we can move from there i really i like with a passion i don't think you understand how much i dislike all the fluff of a conversation i really i really really dislike it and it's because we can cut through all the noise by figuring out why we're both here, right? So an example of that in that conversation would have been, okay, hi, miss, we are looking for 
three hundred thousand dollars for our business what are you looking to invest in and i think that was one thing that i could have did more because i did ask her a question i asked her what her expectation from this phone call because that kind of lets me know what you're looking for but i feel like i could have went more in that direction and interviewed her because at the end of the day that's still kind of what's happening it's a, it's a partnership and even though we need the money we don't want to have the money from people that are that's not going to work out we've already experienced what that looks like so i should have been asking what is it that you are looking for what are, what kind of returns are you trying to get uh you know how much are you trying to invest are you doing it by yourself what is your timeline for your return on your investment like what are you what is your goals from this that's what I should have been doing, but I didn't lean that far into it. I kind of asked a little bit of questions, but one thing, one thing was um, that I noticed is that she didn't really ask us questions, and that is always a red flag. If a person isn't asking you questions, that usually means that uh, they, I want to say they're not interested for sure, but I think that it's more of a lack of skill. Uh, so in a regular conversation you still ask questions because at the end of the day asking the questions gets you to what you're trying to get to so if you're if she asked us like hey are you making a million dollars a year we would be like no she go okay well this is not what i'm trying to invest in and we would have been like all right that's great like cool we understand that and we could have moved forward from there but you know us kind of just talking about it she does funny enough which i think is so crazy she said she's a super super fragrance person she said she loves perfume wears it every day all the time she has potpourri in her hallway she always burning a candle i think she might even have a diffuser a whole bunch of different things that she uses for fragrances so she's a super candle person so we're gonna send her a candle and my my uh goal is to get a corporate uh deal with them in terms of like a corporate gifting situation where for some event at least one event they use us for that event that's what i want even if you're not going to invest you don't have to invest that's perfectly fine but i and that's, that's another thing too this comes down to uh i guess knowing how to negotiate and i always feel like there someone can always give you something Right, she did give us a, a a direction to go into, but someone can always give you something, even if it's not money. Like they can do something. Like, oh, okay, I don't, I'm not gonna give you hundred thousand dollars, but my company uh did does need a gift for this thing, so we can put you in that, or we know someone that is looking for a candle situation, we could do that, or I know someone who buys candles for a store, we could do that. Like those are things that I feel as though. I could look at in the future for conversations like okay let's try and lean more into that thing uh as if this is not going to work out as opposed to letting it just fall by the wayside and it's like all right are you going to invest no okay bye later and that's it so that's something i'm going to try and keep in mind uh going forward because i think you know it, it'll help uh but yeah i said that's the what she pointed us in the direction of was something called ACA yeah it's like an angel investor situation and she was saying that which I never thought about really that if you go with angel investors as a group they're more likely to invest because they're not spending a lot of money for one person so they might have eight people spending five thousand dollars and that's 40 grand so that person might have like not me per se but there are a lot of people who have five thousand dollars they can spend like who aren't super rich and that's not really hard to do for a lot of people. Um, and that's and that's me thinking very limitedly because there are also people who have a million dollars who can spend and are like, yeah, it's nothing to me. Like there's a lot of people that have that. So, and you can get five million if everybody wanna give up one. So that's something that we're gonna have to just look at and see how it goes. We had talked to her about us transitioning from brick and mortar more or less by doing the craft fairs and pop-ups to going online. And one thing that's happened this week is I've been trying to build out the website even more right that's been my goal is to get it to a point where someone random could find this website and feel comfortable enough to just buy a candle and be like, oh this was great i love this like i really enjoyed this that's my goal one thing that i've had in mind for a long time and i haven't really figured out how to execute it up until now is getting people random people from outside to smell the candles and then posting that on the website so right now we only have two videos i went outside on today is saturday i went outside on thursday and i had went to 
is a popular place over here is Chelsea Market, not the actual Artisan Fleece part, just the rest of the market. And while I was there, right, my goal was to get 10, right? And I'm like, okay, it's not hard to do. It's, it's always weird. Maybe I could be in denial. I don't know what it is. I could, it could be denial. But when I'm there, I'm like, I know I can get 10 people to do a video, right? Well, actually, that's not true. Let, let me rephrase that or, or uh, walk that back. I can get 10 people to smell a candle very easily, right? The problem comes into if they want to be on video or not, right? That's what the issue is. So when I had got there, I was just kind of walking around trying to like scope it out and see who am I going to go after to get a video from, kind of what the environment is of Chelsea Market for that type of content. So as I'm walking through the market, it's a huge like hallway, if you want to call it, and a bunch of stores on the left and the right. At the end of it is where Artisan Fleas is at that we used to do back in the day. Y'all probably are familiar with that place. So when I get there, right, I'm talking to a guy that we are familiar with. We've talked to him. He works at another booth. And I'm like, you know what? I walk. I'm like, hey, actually, I'm like, okay, okay, help me with this. I'm like, I got to make a video for uh, for the candle of you smelling it. He's like, all right, cool, I can do that. So I give him the candle, right? And then as I'm like going to look for my phone, he's like, oh, you want to record it? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, I don't want to be on video. And listen, I mean, it's a personal thing to me. Like me personally, I'm always skeptical of people like that. I don't know what it is, why I am like that. I don't even know if it's warranted in any type of anything. But that always seems odd to me. Because and let I, I I don't know I really I really don't know it, it, to me it stems from a deep insecurity that's always my go to it, it just seems weird to me that someone is like hey do to participate in this thing and if there's a camera involved like nah 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 it's like unless you're a criminal or you think that you're unattractive I don't even know why you would do it like it's a fun thing to do and it's not even just a candle thing just in general like. Like someone I want to interview interview you about um I don't know what do you think about potato salad like I like and to me it's like whatever it's not a big deal but he was like yeah nah 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 I don't really want to be on camera so I'm like all right cool so that annoyed me because he already told me yes to start so I'm like all right fine so once he smelled it he told me what he he told me what he thought about it. in my mind it's like it don't really matter to me because I'm trying to get a video but one thing I did do before I got to him was I went to Anthropology. I don't know how popular the store is um, in you guys' cities or not, but here, that's a store. And they carry a candle called the Volcano Candle by a brand called Capri Blue. People love that candle, the Volcano Candle. I'm talking about love the candle. They love it so much that when we made the AD candle, people would come up to us and say, oh my God, this smells just like the Volcano Candle but cleaner and i would be like what is that what is the volcano and they wouldn't even say candle they would say it smells like volcano and i would be like what is that like i don't even know what that is and they were like oh it's this brand uh at anthropology to help they have this candle and i'd be like all right cool but at the time i didn't really think much about it i just kind of was like okay whatever but i i kept hearing it over and over and over and over again i'm like you know what let me go google and see what this is so i looked it up and i found a candle right i'm like all right cool i've never really seen it before it is what it is i might have smelled it once with melissa before thursday but other than that pretty much was just that's it so i had talked about with y'all before that i wanted to do a couple of videos some content one of them was burning our candle next to other candles and see how long our candle lasts compared to theirs that's one i also want to see what the smells were like of our candles compared to theirs in terms of if i get a headache or not if it smells like paraffin or some type of fake thing i want to know that um also this is a big one i wanted to see what other people think about our candle compared to their candle that's what that was a big thing for me right so i'm like oh okay i'm gonna go to the store and buy it right because i've been wanting to do it for a while so i bought i bought one so i had this guy smell both of them right now i gave him our candle first and then their candle second and he said he likes our candle more 
he said that it's more or less like it's cleaner or it's fresher than the other one right so after me and him stopped the conversation and i ended it we left or whatever i went to someone else that we know that's at the market so we talked for a, for a long well, probably for a good month maybe like 30 40 maybe like 30 minutes probably we're talking and after the conversation she smelled both of the candles now she prefers the anthropology candle to our candle i think her thing was that it's stronger she likes a stronger candle which is perfectly fine i would if i had recorded that i would have posted that online because i feel like if somebody doesn't like our candle i don't want every video to be Oh, this candle i like this one i want i want it to be like a mix like, oh, people, a mix of people saying i like the volcano candle more than the d candle because it's either stronger the smell is better uh you know it whatever it looks better whatever the situation is that's kind of what i wanted to go off of so that was her reasoning is that it's stronger and this is just like a little side note but she was telling me that the booth that she works at they sell jewelry she said that they were used to do like a thousand dollars a day at Chelsea Market, and I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Like, that's kind of what we were trying to do, but you know, couldn't get, get there. And their highest price product is sixty five dollars. So they don't have an extravagant booth. They don't have like a whole bunch of light. I don't think they have any lights. It's just like a table with a sign and the little uh, jewelry holder stand. So that definitely intrigued me, just because I was wondering how how would i sell how would i make a thousand dollars a day selling something like that right that's just what my brain was going to or in kind of incorporate that into the candles so that was that was one thing and like i said they really she said that they were doing like 200 dollars a day before um but they're but they before that they were normally doing a thousand dollars a day so they were shocked when they were only doing 200 dollars a day and then i think she said it was her, her first time specifically doing a thousand dollars uh earlier in the week but like I said, that's that's amazing for what they're doing. And I think a lot of brands in there could be doing similar numbers to that because they have a lot more of a setup than she does. So that was uh, kind of surprising. Probably nothing nobody says. Oh. <laughs> because it's incongruent. How come every time we got there, oh, it's hot. It's amazing. It's hot. And we get there. Man, it's been like this for months. He's going to look at you be like, why he gets sales? I'm not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know. I, don't know. I feel like they be saying that so you get in the same predicament as them, and then they. But I don't know. I don't know. So. So yeah, there was that. So then, like I said, I'm walking around and. I'm kind of uncomfortable because I don't really know how to approach the situation, and I'm like, all right, you know what? I gotta just thug it out. Not for oh. I'm walking, like I'm walking back and forth, I'm walking around, and it's mostly a, a, a eatery, right? So there's a lot of restaurants in there. It's mostly people just sitting down eating food. And I don't want to walk up to somebody while they're eating and be like, hey, smell this candle or whatever, right? So I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. So I'm walking back and forth, walking back and forth. I see somebody standing up against the wall. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to try to ask her. I go up to her, and I'm like, okay, what would, even, what would I even say to people? What's my opening line? What's my hook? And I just said, are you into candles? She was like, oh, uh, yeah, you know, sure, kind of. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, here, smell this. Like, well, tell me what you think about it. Now, at the time, her vibe wasn't giving me that she would want me to record her. So I didn't even ask. Uh, I just kind of wanted to get myself in the mood of talking to people. So I'm talking to her. I'm asking her questions. And it's getting, it's slowly getting more awkward as I'm asking her questions. Just kind of like. What do you think about this? I think it's because she probably doesn't know why I'm asking her. That's probably a, a good reasoning. I think that's that's probably it. I'm just asking questions about the candle. She might think, you know what it is? She probably thought trying to fuck. I'm just looking at her. But I'm thinking about it now. That probably is it. Because I didn't really tell her what uh, I was even doing. I just said, can okay, smell this? So I had her smell anthropology candle. And she told me that she has a bunch of those at home. Her mom comes up. And I'm like, oh, you know, do you want to smell the candle? Her mom's like, what? I'm like, do you want to smell the candle? Her mom's like, what? And even when her mom came up, she kind of had a look like, you know, the, you know that smile, the white smile? They'd be like, like, what are you doing here? Why are you, why are you talking to her? What's happening here? Like, that's the kind of smile she had. So I'm like, all right. And then when I asked her, right, she, this, this, how, like I said, I, it was an awkward situation. She, the mom, asked the daughter, do we have time for that? Right? 
And mind you, it's smelling a candle. So you all you have time for that. It's like you not you not if you was in that much of a rush, you would have ran over here and ran out. Like that's what she was in a rush. You don't have time to smell a candle. So the daughter looks at me and she's kind of like, mm, "Nah, we gotta catch our train. We don't have time for that." And I'm like, "All right, thank you." And I left. One thing that that did was which was kind of strange. I didn't expect this. That awkward moment kind of pumped me up for the next person to kind of talk to the next person. Um, but I couldn't find anybody or I didn't find anybody that I felt was in a position for me to like walk up to them and talk to them about that. So that's kind of what my, my mentality was. I'm like, all right, how can I get this done? So later my friend calls me, I'm on the phone for like an hour, right? And I'm walking and after that, I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to get mine. just probably been there for like two, three hours. I haven't gotten one single video. I'm walking around. just like, what is, what, should, what do I do to get a video? So I see some people that I feel like kind of fit our audience and they're standing in front of anthropology i think they were like getting some out their bags on the floor so i'm like all right i kind of i'm kind of circling I'm like right, i walk past them I'm like all right you know i'm going to the front on the side of them and ask them from there so my new line was hey uh do you are you guys candle people they're like yeah i said okay great i gotta get 10 videos for my job right i pull up the can i give it to them i said hey can you describe this scent to me right and they're like, all right, sure. Boom. Just like that. Easy. Easy peasy picking nothing. It was like, it was super easy. So she smelled it, right? I feel like her friend was more apprehensive. Appre what's the right word? Apprehensive. apprehensive about it, right? And she kind of looked at the candle, was like, all right, I guess you doing it. I'll smell it too. And she, she, she described it and her, what she felt like it was. And I'm like, all right, cool. Thank you. And I feel like that to me was the best, uh, not the best. Like that was that was the best. Mm, what would I say? What would I call that? Sequence of events and like the best script for getting uh that video. And I think it turned out really well. So now after that, I'm like, all right, cool, I got this. I'm like, all right, I'm about to go to people. I'm about to just you know I'm feeling myself. I got rejected like five times, like back to back. I'm like, hey, you want to smell a candle? Ignore me. I'm like, you want to smell a candle? Like, mm, no. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. I'm like, hey, what's my candle? People just not looking at me in my face. I'm like, all right, that was rough. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, you know what? 2024 is about environment, right? I'm like, I could always try to 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 bum rush myself through it. I could always try to just uh, brute force it and try and thug it out, right? It's always that is always a possibility, always an option. That is not what my goal is for 2024. My goal for 2024 is if something is not working, improve the environment for it. That's how you make things work. So I said, okay, even though there's mad people here, maybe this isn't the best environment for what I'm trying to do. I go, okay, where can I go? What's a better environment? I'm like, okay, what do I think works? I think people who are not in a rush is good. People in that market were kind of like walking around, like trying to get somewhere, right? Trying to either get through the market or get to a store. I'm like, okay, so I got to find somewhere where people are just standing around. I figure, oh, Penn Station is a great spot because people are waiting for, they're waiting for the train and the train could be the LRRR and it could be New Jersey Transit. It could be a lot. They're just waiting around or you're just chilling out, just kind of standing around, right? And they have this moiny hoiny hall. So you could kind of be like on your way over there, thinking about going over there. You just kind of just there, right? And I'm like, okay, this is a good location. Um, another problem with that I kind of ran into at the market was people didn't speak English because there was a lot of tourists there. It's a tourist attraction. So that's another issue. Just even the, the idea of who are you walking up to me randomly and you want to record me and I'm not from here. Nah, I'm good, sir. You're trying to rob me. I don't know you. Like, I don't even, I, mm -mm, right? So I'm like, okay, I think that would be a great place. So I get off the train or I get on the train, go uptown, go to Penn Station and I got only got one person there, but I got that one person there being there for maybe 10 minutes, right? And there were so many people that were there that were in the same situation as her, just kind of standing. She was standing by the by the uh, the time for the trains. And I'm like, you know, we ask her. I'm like, hey, uh, you in the candle? She was like, yeah. I'm like, hey, smell this candle. What do you think about it? Tell me, describe it for me, right? And... It was great. She described it. It was a good interaction. And I'm like, oh, this is super easy. Then my phone was about to die. So I'm 4%. So I'm like, okay, that was very easy. 
I think I can repeat that another eight more times to get content for the website. So I was very happy about that. And I think, like I said, I think when I got home, I showed Melissa the video, right? So the original video is just, you know, obviously not cut up or anything. The one that's up there now, Melissa felt like I should cut certain things and add captions to it. And I think that made the video a lot better. Second thing come up after that, right? We're like, okay, we got the video on the website. You know, well, that took its own amount of time, like an hour or two hours to get that on there, but whatever. Now, I wasn't necessarily thinking about it when I was getting a video, but it could literally be put on all the platforms. There's at least this Instagram, there's TikTok, and there is YouTube, right? So my goal right now is to get 10 videos of each cent. That's 80 different videos, right? that will be thrown on to the platforms. So I threw one of them on TikTok, right? And it ain't do too hot. Got like 200 views, right? The other one on there, ain't do too hot. Got like 240 views. I'm like, all right, there's not really hitting like that. For that joint on, on YouTube, two of the videos I put on there are already over 2,000 views, right? One of them got us five subscribers already on that video. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, oh, Really? Mind you, like I said, this is not even, in my opinion, the best iteration. It's literally the first thing. We haven't iterated on it yet. So it's only going to get better, in my opinion. Five subscribers from that one video. And I might even do better. Let me check what it's at now. Because I didn't even really look look at it. I just kind of like glanced at it. It got 75 likes and 2,400 views. Mind you, the channel has uh, 769 subscribers. So that is three, four times the amount. Oh, this is, actually, no, this is a different video. This is something I use from um, one of those, for, those content that makes your content shorter. This is one of those. But the other one still got 2,000 views. And I'm just like, bro, bro, like, that's crazy. That's really crazy to me. Percentage viewed. That's kind of crazy. And the other one only have 38%. That's not crazy. But yeah, that's kind of what we're doing right now. We are for sure focusing on repurposing the content and getting more short form content out there. So I always had to find a way that made it easier to do without having to do too much work. Exactly. Um, I think this is a good way of doing that. And maybe at some point we can like step up our short form content game and really like get into it at some point, you know, keep my fingers crossed that it's not too crazy. And now it is everybody's favorite segment. Ooh, yay. Ooh, League of Villains, League of Villains. Yay. Ooh, League of Villains. I had a lot of fun this week. I was able to see some friends that I haven't seen in a while. Honestly, I think I've seen all, almost all my friends within the last two weeks, except for Ariel. But shout out to Isaro, shout out to Ebony, shout out to Brittany. Had wonderful, wonderful times with all three of these ladies. Um, so that was pretty cool. I, I met up with Isaro and Brittany yesterday, and I think I met up with Ebony like last week. So yeah, it was just really cool to be able to hang out with friends and then they also kind of have like businessy backgrounds and stuff like that. So and they all would technically be in our target market. So whenever I go meet up with them, too, I also bring like samples or, you know, get their opinions on different scents, especially the perfumes, because they're easy to carry. And I can like have like five of them in my purse at one time and not really think anything. Five candles in my purse at one time is fake a lot. I've been going um super hard on my ux ui design course i've been attacking like a module a day sometimes it might take me two days depending on what the assignments are but i've been knocking them out and to give you kind of just like a, a, a mental just to kind of say where my progress is right now i'm like three modules into the, the fourth course and there's seven courses total into there's seven courses total and each course has four modules. So I'm pretty much almost done with the fourth module. I'll be on to the fifth, and then I'll only have two more after that. So I should, if I continue on this path, I should definitely be done before the end of January. Like, definitely. There's that, and I feel like I've, I've been learning a lot of interesting things. Um, right now I'm learning about usability studies, and that's pretty much like whenever you have data, <clears throat> Whenever you have data to to uh, on your product, you're just kind of checking it out, seeing how people feel about it, what they're using. It's literally what we do with Hotjar every day. So it, it's so interesting 
because we are not UX UI people like um but we are doing that every day especially Donovan Donovan does more than I do so I always think that's funny um what else <clears throat> I've been doing some R&D and right now I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to make refills. And I have a, th I don't know if I'd call it a theory, an idea. So, so I'm testing it out and prototyping right now. It's, I had to make two different molds. So right now I'm iterating the first mold. I'm trying to figure out the first mold and I'm using clay and clay takes several days to dry. So I don't think I can take out this um I, I can't check the prototype for the first mold until either later on today like tonight or tomorrow right once once i figure out how to make this first mold i then have to make a second mold which is a silicone mold so this is a lot of fun things that's happening here and then once that silicone now also takes several days so you know this process may if i do everything for perfect on the first try i could have a refill candle and like maybe two weeks if i don't do everything perfect on the first try it might take you know a month or two for me to figure out what to do so but i'm excited to get the ball rolling because i know that one of the pain points that our customers have is that we don't have like cheap glasses so i know when you go to like um if your candle comes in kind of like a cheap or flimsy glass, you don't feel as much about throwing it out. You kind of feel like you're throwing out like a regular glass bottle. Our, you know, our our vessels for the candles, they're like frosted glass. They're they're usable. You can use them as like, um, you know, to hold stuff or whatever. So some people may not want to throw them out. And because we've talked about having refills as an option, like in the future, some people are literally waiting for the refills to come out so they can use their vessels that they have because it's very easy to rack up vessels. We might we might have a vessel buyback program or something like that in the future. We got an order, so I have to ship that out today. I also got a subscription for Coursera and I'm going to be taking more graphic design and I'm going to take more graphic design and Photoshop courses because I'm literally like you know designing the products and designing the different and i already started taking one for graphic design it's so funny that things that are kind of like intuitive for me are things that they were teaching so that's always interesting um an example of that very small example is like the type of fonts that you use they suggest that if you use a, a font that has like lines for the letters to pair it with another font that doesn't have lines and i think that's literally the design of the candles literally the design of the candles because there's lines with like zesty and there's words down here that say hand poured uh, beeswax candles and the words down there they literally don't have lines the same way that zesty does it's it's interesting when you do something naturally and you find out like oh there's a reason for that or oh no that's like how it's supposed to be done or whatever my favorite thing about taking these courses is figuring out how to do the extra shit like how to do masks and it's probably that's not even extra that's i think that's basic but i don't know how to do them because i'm a self-taught a uh, photoshop person i feel like i'm gaining the tools to manipulate the photos to whatever it is that i want it to be which is so fun um the shortcuts i think are very helpful too because there's sometimes you literally have to either repeat the same command over and over and over again or like keep duplicating things and blah blah, blah. and that's a fun thing about photoshop because you can learn something like just like a quick shortcut and something like that and it literally changes the whole workflow of how you create your images and stuff like that and then i'm also um learning donovan made this amazing um generator generative ai photo but um I'm also learning how to do that and how to put in different prompts for that too, um, to work in tandem with, you know, the Photoshop or in tandem with, you know, whatever images that we're coming up with. Yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much where I'm at. The next thing on topic for today, for myself, that I wanted to talk about is brain fog. Now, I've, I've said this before in the podcast, right, that I think that I have suffered a brain injury that I never got treated like in the last five years playing basketball. This never happened to me before. I got hit him. I got elbowed in my head and I remember it ringing. Like, I remember being like, Ee! I was like, 
that's crazy. It never happened to me before. But I've heard that that's what happens when you get a concussion. Like when you get a concussion, you break your your ear rings. So I'm pretty sure it was a concussion, right? So that was, let's say, on a random Tuesday. Never happened before. Happened once. I remember saying, like, you know what? I'm gonna just sit it out the rest of the day. I don't know what. I don't know what that was. I'm probably, I'm done though. I'm done playing ball today. Y'all do what y'all want to do. I come up the day after that, come play basketball. Got hit in the same side of my head the same way, and my head was ringing again. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I need to not play basketball for a little bit, like a week, like a week or two or something, because this is getting, like, for it to, because I think when you get injured or you get hurt, I think your body tries to compensate for it, and I think in, in compensating for the injured part of your body it's more likely to get injured again, if that makes sense. Because it's not strong yet. Like, it didn't get strong, it didn't heal. Your body is like off-centered, right? So anything that happens that your body's not prepared for, you might fall back on your hurt ankle or whatever the situation might be. So I feel like my equilibrium wasn't adjusted yet. And that's why when I'm playing basketball, I'm thinking that I'm too far from your, I'm thinking I'm far from your, your elbow, even though I'm actually close enough to really am. So I think things like that happen. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just not play basketball for a little bit. But... I never forgot that that happened. And I've, I've realized when it comes to even talking, there are certain times I'll try to say a word. I have to like really like squeeze, like eat to get the word out. It's weird. Like it's never happened before. I never had that feeling. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Right. It could be a lot of different things, but I know that's happening. It's strange. But I think if I talk slower, it doesn't happen as much. Also, when I was super young, I used to always talk really fast, which I still kind of do now. So that always had an uh, uh, that always caused an issue when I was talking, anyways. But I've never really had a problem getting the words out. I just more so had a problem of saying the words coherently and having you know spaces and commas and periods and all that other stuff. That was my thing. Everything was just a one big run on sentence. So you can imagine why it'd be weird where I'm. I have a word in my mind I'm saying and I have to like kind of like tighten my body to say the word. I don't know what that is, right? It can be CTE. Who knows? I don't know what it is. But I know that, like I said, it's definitely uh, crazy. So at some point, I want to get it checked out. But something else that's happened to me that I've noticed is I'll be having a conversation and I feel like Sometimes nothing will be like, like there. I'll be, I'll be, I'm not say that. It'll be, I'm trying to remember a word, right? I can remember everything about the word, like whatever I'm trying to describe, I can remember all of that. I can remember, let's say, for example, I'm describing the camera, right? I can say, you know, that thing you take pictures with, it has the Canon, it has the LED screen on the side, we use it for the podcast, but I can't, the word, like the image is in my head. I can see the image and I have the lines coming off from the image of what it is, but I cannot place the word on what the image is, right? And that's happened several times, usually with names of people, I feel like, but it's, it's I've definitely seen it happen other times, other things. So I'm like, this is starting to get kind of weird. Like it's weird to me that this is happening. So I'm like, okay, how can I, like, let me Google what this might be, right? So I came across, you know, brain fog. And I looked into, I'm like, what causes brain fog? Like, what what would cause me to just be thinking about something and it's just fuzzy? Like, I can't put a word to the image in my head. One of the things I read is that inflammation of the brain can cause brain fog. And you know what causes inflammation. One of the things that causes inflammation is unhealthy food, Right? So isn't that crazy that what you eat can affect like your memories and your thoughts? It's always weird to me because we always perceive dreams, memories, thoughts to be non-tangible things. So how is it that my food that I'm eating can disrupt that tangible, non-tangible thing? It's always, I always think about those things as like, they shouldn't be connected in that way. But that's one of them. Inflammation will cause that, right? So on all unhealthy foods, <clears throat> another one that will cause that is a sedentary lifestyle, which y'all know for the last couple of years, that has been me. I've been in the house and there has been, I mean, it was like one month in particular 
like right when we left the craft fair i didn't go outside for like 20 something days right i can't say in my life a time that i have not left my house in that amount of time like actually gone outside i can't tell you i can't tell you like and i used to be super active playing multiple sports playing basketball for 10 hours a day for multiple days out the week going to multiple different uh games that i have in a day uh doing this all type of stuff right going outside to the gym going driving around whatever the thing was i was very active but in the last couple of years the activity has gone down i'll say for like two or three years has gone down dramatically so that also contributes to brain fog so i'm like okay these are things i have to work on because in my mind i think okay if i'm not eating food you know i might feel a little sick i might gain some weight i'm not thinking that's going to affect my mental capacity like that is something that's an issue like i can't have that that's terrible so i'm like okay i need to make sure i put more <coughs> no pun intended more weight on this and you know actually make sure that i'm paying attention to that so that's something i'm going to add to like my things to look out for is is my brain fog decreasing and is my exercise output increasing another one too that i kind of realized to some degree and I thought about buying a Faraday bag or Faraday box is the the blue light and the radiation from the phone. I've considered like either getting one of those screen protectors that block the LED light from coming out of the phone or the Faraday bag that you can put the phone inside of when I'm sleeping. Because I don't know why this is. But personally, I hate getting ready for bed it's always been a thing for me I, I i like going to bed i like sleeping but i don't like getting ready for bed like okay you gotta go to bed you're gonna brush your teeth you're gonna take a shower you're gonna you know set the lights put turn the lights down you're gonna uh i don't know put dishes away like whatever the thing that you do make some tea like i always hated that my thing is i'm tired i'm getting to bed i'm going to sleep and when I'm in the bed, I'm, I'm watching TV until I fall asleep. But I don't want to put myself to sleep. I just want to lay in the bed because I'm tired and go to sleep. So one of the repercussions of that is I'm going to be using my phone. So when I fall asleep, my phone will be next to my head. It'll be on my chest. It'll be on my leg or something like that. And I already know or I believe that that's not going to be healthy for me. So I also feel like sometimes when I have had that happen, that my I wake up with a fuzzy feeling in my head like, like just kind of like a vibrating like mm, like just not centered when that when that does happen so i thought about doing something like that but yeah like i said this just trying to self-improve do things that are just better for me health wise um mentally and physically but that brain fog thing is rough and one thing i've noticed too this is when the next topic i had was i feel like conversing with people in person has gotten so awkward and i'm curious if y'all feel the same way maybe it could just be me like i said I, I could have a brain injury uh i could have brain fog from eating bad and not going outside so it could be me but i feel like a lot of people have lost conversational skills and i'll be talking to someone i'll say something to them and they'll just kind of look at me like Right. And I'm like, are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm, I'm be looking at them. I, now I feel awkward because we're just standing here looking at each other. And I'm like, what? Is, this is a weird thing that's happening. And I'm like, should I just start talking more for you since you're not communicating anything? You're just kind of there. And my theory is that I think it has something to do with COVID. I think that's one thing. Um, I think that for me specifically during COVID, I talked about this when it was happening, is that There was a lot of, there was a, a huge lack of communication with other people during that time period, especially for me, because I was a bike messenger. So it was like, okay, you get up, you go on a train, you go to work, you drop the food off. They introduced that whole uh, non-contact delivery. So now you leave the food in the front of the person's door. You haven't talked to them and say, hi, how you doing? You don't say, here's your food, nothing. You just leave the food there, go back on your bike, pick up the food from a window, take it to another person, right? It was one of the most dystopian things I've ever seen in my life. Like, it was so weird that like, 
I can do this whole entire job riding around the city and not even really talk to nobody. Like, I come to the store, they have a window for the food, they put it in the window, I take it from them, I drive my bike all the way to the next person, go up the stairs to the person's house, put the food in front of their door, and just do that like 20, 35 times, right? So, I think that that also contributes to the lack of uh, conversational skills that people are having, right? So, there's that. I think that people became a lot more scared because of one for the mask, but also because of the idea of COVID. I think people became a lot more uh, either sensitive or uh, just kind of like tight and afraid to do anything. I feel like that happened a lot. And I was trying to figure out what it what is happening when I'm talking to people that, I, that I'm sensing. And Melissa compared it. Well, she, when I told her what I was feeling, she was like, well, people have also been, because of COVID, communicating a lot through screens and monitors and Zoom and Google Meets and all other forms of communication. So people aren't actually talking face to face. Like, not they aren't, but like, uh, there's an increase of talking to a computer screen. They are responding to you as if they are on the Zoom call, right? And... That made a lot of sense to me. And I said, okay, I do I do get that vibe. Like when I'm talking to somebody, like it, it does feel like like this is like, like hey, do you like is it there's like a lag in conversation. So when I was talking to her, Melissa, that's when it kind of dawned on me that I feel like there's a huge disconnect with people. Like I feel like when I'm talking to people, I'm trying to build that connection or get that connection from me to them when i say a word it resonates with you you can feel what i'm saying you can empathize with it. you can you can uh make your own sentence or whatever and, and give it back to me and we go back and forth like that that's kind of how a conversation should be you can like a whole point of communicating is to connect with the other person you're talking to or to inform them which is still a form of connection but with the lack of uh like or with the increase of talking to the phone to the computer and all the other stuff I feel like there's that weird disconnect. So, like, you know, when you talk to somebody on Zoom, like, it's always that I'm talking, but then you talk, and then I don't talk, and then you stop, and then I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like, okay, what do we, like, we kind of like, ah, ah, yeah, okay, all right, guys, bye, see you. And it's like, it's a weird interaction. Um, and I'm wondering if that's what I'm also feeling when I'm talking to people. Um, but, again, like I said, it could be completely off, and it could just be me. Right. So that's why me going outside now, I think, will help me to either work on that or figure out if it is me or not. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is, oh, well, we did get our final order from MNR. So in total, we got one hundred and five orders, which came up to uh, like thirty five probably like thirty eight, thirty nine hundred dollars something like that maybe so that was cool and they sent the invoice to them they paid it like the next day so that money should be coming in soon so i'm happy about that uh but the last thing i want to talk about was a conversation i had with my friend uh namai shout out to him and we talked about saving and earning and i know before i talked about saving is a good thing and i i oh i do agree that you should save money right like, i don't think you shouldn't save money in my conversation with him he feels like you can save money no matter how much money you make. You should always try to save money. And I disagree with that wholeheartedly. And I feel like there's a difference between being poor and being frugal. Being poor is I can't save. I don't have the money to save. Frugal is I have the money and I'm choosing to save it. I'm choosing not to spend the money. Being poor is like I don't have the money to, to like <laughs> to, to not spend that's what it is so the 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 reframing of my thought process on it is there should be a baseline of money that a person is making or has to to move forward or do whatever they want to do right and it's funny because he's an entrepreneur and he had talked about getting a part time job. And it's, it's always kind of it's, it's always kind of funny because I feel like it's kind of like taboo to say it when you're an entrepreneur, like, oh, I'm gonna get a job like and it's listen, I, me personally, y'all know how I feel about it. OK, 
I don't think everybody feels like that. How I feel, right? But I think there still is an uncomfortable feeling of saying I'm going to build something myself or be an entrepreneur and then saying, okay, I'm going to also get a job, right? And it's like, I completely understand needing to have a baseline or stability amount of money, right? Because we don't have it. So I understand completely the purpose of it, right? Philosophically, I don't like jobs. Personality wise, jobs don't work with me. I don't, I do not do well with someone above me telling me what to do. And I don't, I especially don't do well. I know more than a person above me. I do even worse when I feel like I have things or ideas that can change to make this environment better, to make this job better, to make this business better. And I can't implement those. So I'm sitting here like, you know what? I'm at the register and I've realized that, uh, if I if I set it up like this, we get more customers or I can get the job done faster, right? I would implement that in the business. But who who am I gonna go and talk to and say, hey man, uh I'm working. I think we should do this, this, that, and the third. Now, granted, granted, let me say this also. Let me preface it by saying this. I have never had a career type of job, right? I've always had very low level jobs maybe except for maybe one or two. But for the most part, that's normally what it is. So my guess would be that there are jobs that people have that maybe they are able to change things at their job, possibly. Yes, none of those jobs exist. Like what? What kind of job would that be? That's like a project, maybe like a project manager or like a, like a, like a project manager or like some type of, honestly, like the investor. That don't count. The, when you said investor, I'm thinking about investors. Are you talking about her job on the side? Right. Mm-hmm. That job. Because, funny enough, when I was talking to, to Britt about it yesterday, she was like, is she not surprised? Because at that level, they're focused on processes and not necessarily, like, operating the business. Like, people under her would be the ones that think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah, like... Because as soon as you as soon as you get above like a regular kind of managerial position, like or even then you still telling people kind of what you are making decisions. But I guess it's like I feel like there's a there's there's a level underneath the C suite, right? Where it's like you're maybe like a department head or stuff. Like a like a D suite. Maybe. So like I feel like yeah, if you're a department head or if you're like the head researcher or blah blah blah, like that's a position but you would still have to you would still have to report to someone else they would have to approve what you're deciding but i feel like at that point you would hold more weight because of your position your experience and blah 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 as opposed to being like an entry-level position i'm not gonna change my company because you just came in you know straight out of college and you want me to fry it? I'm, I'm probably not going to listen to you because, like, what's your credentials? Why do you feel like that? Sure. Like, maybe, like... I know, I agree with you. Right. But that's what, I, that's what I was saying. So... So, so, but if you're my head researcher or my, like, my head development team... But how do I... But who gets... But how do I get there? I got to, like... You got to Right. I don't like that. Because now I have to be at the... I have to be flipping these burgers the wrong way for 12 years until I can finally go. Well, I don't think the way that you become the head researcher at Burger King is to <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. So then, okay. So then you say, so then how would you even do that? You go to school, get a degree, and then apply for a researcher okay. position? You could, you could get, do certificates or do courses. Um, it's, I think at this day and age, it's just experience and knowing people. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and, I guess. Or, or even having a portfolio to show them. A research portfolio? Huh? A research portfolio? Like, sure. <laughs> right. It's like I did research for the, these companies and this is how my research helped develop this and help like this is the the the, the, the but, results that came from my research that um so my, the company X amount of dollars. Am I an employee or am I like it sounds like I'm like an agency or like a so it sounds like I'm I'm partnering with them. Once you get past entry level positions, yes you have to you have to Pitch yourself. I, I, there are jobs out there that I might even enjoy doing. 
I, I'm pretty sure there are, right? But philosophically for me, I don't want to do that. It doesn't coincide with me. It does not resonate with me. It doesn't fit me. That's it. That's literally it. I understand that it's good to have a baseline of money. I understand that it's consistent money. I understand you can go and get a lot of different jobs. You know, if you something happens, you get fired, whatever. I understand that. There's a working corporate ladder. You can work up and make more money and you're pretty much fine. I get all of that. For me, it does not work for me. That would have, like I said, I, I don't even like saying it's the last resort because if it's lower than that. I don't know what comes, what comes before, like, there's a last resort and then there's get a job. Like, it's after that, right? So that's that's my brain. That's how my brain operates. If they have to, it would have to literally be no other options for me to do where I'm like, okay, I have to get a job. That, that, that it doesn't work. From when I was six, five years old, when I could go outside, I was always selling stuff, start some type of small business or whatever. That's just how I've been operating my entire life. It doesn't work for me to do something else. But with that being said, I do have to incorporate some form of baseline income stability just as a human being, right? So that's something that is on the to-do list as well. But uh, it is the end of the podcast. So we'll be back here next week. You can find all the behind the scenes content on social medias. Mine is Donovan Gray, D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y. And my phenomenal, beautiful, amazing girlfriend, Anita Byrne. A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. You know what it is? Hashtag Bamboo Project 2024. We don't have a, a thing yet. So I'm working on that. And with that being said, Bamboo Project 